So today's video, we're going to be breaking down Dimitri Bivol's one, two, one, two, three, uh, and his boxing and boxing movement on and off the line, and why it's successful for him, why it's good, why it's bad. But we're going to be breaking it down and how he works with his coach, um, and we're going to be going over how you guys can get this kind of workout and get this kind of boxing practice at home. Okay, so first off, we're going to take a look at how he uses some of this stuff in the ring. Okay, let me go ahead and open that guy up. So first off. Here he is, trying to get his weight to the front foot so he can control the space with this jab here, okay? Now, is he taking a step? Is he jumping? He's, he's just walking, right? And then when he gets there, he controls, and he pendulum steps a little bit, and then controls and throws a body shot, right? Right hand. Now he's going to move his head. Now, I want you to pay attention to how he's kind of on the front foot here, all right? His weight is toward the front foot. He's not in the center of his line. Even though Dimitri Bivol doesn't do a lot of weight transitions, okay? Most of his weight transition goes to uh, jumping on and off the line. And we're going to be talking about that in a second. But watch as he approves, approaches the line. Front foot, back foot. Front foot. And he takes a small step here. Gets his weight to the line. Throws a jab off the line. Forward, back, right? Easily takes a step off the line there. Easily taking steps off the line, controlling here. And easily jumping off the line and making a uh, counter one, two, right? So real quick, he's gonna probe him with a jab from the back foot, leans forward, probe, moves off the line when the counter comes and then moves back into the line with the one, two, okay? Now, I wanna point out that he's using this jab as a setup punch. Let's go ahead and skip forward here. He's using this jab as a setup punch to draw his opponent in so he can use that jab to get back into position and throw the right hand. Now. There are a lot of different ways to achieve what Bivol is doing here, okay? Now, Canelo, when this punch comes, he likes to pull off the line to the back foot like this and then counter with the uppercut. He has a very similar technique, right? Bivol, because he doesn't really transition his weight or change positions, he likes to do the boxing, the in and out, on and off the line um, with footwork or stepping. I don't want to say with footwork, you know, but because it's different, right? One of them is just shifting and changing positions. The other one is taking a step off the line, but they both have to use their weight and their weight management to do these tactics, right? Or to do these tricks. Now, after Bivol jumps off the line, he has to bring his weight back to the line in a way that still allows him to throw the right hand, all right? So that's gonna be kind of what we talk about a little bit right now. Um, actually, I'm gonna play that clip too. As I kind of talk, actually, I'm gonna play a different clip. We're gonna play this one here. I'm gonna break, not this one. I'm gonna break this one down in a second, but we're gonna kind of go over it. Not that one. Not that one either, guys. Here we go. One, one, two. Okay. We're just gonna play this guy. We're gonna kind of be going over uh, how to do these drills. Let's go. And come forward. There we go. All right, that's the wrong one. Technical difficulties, guys. There we go. So that's his one, one, two, okay? Now, I want you to pay attention to how he shoots the jab and he stays on the back foot, and when he throws the right hand, he transfers his weight uh, to the front foot, right? It's more complicated than that because at the highest level, it's not just about where we are in our, in where we are in our opponent's line, but it's where we are in our line as well. Because I can be on the front foot and my opponent can be on the front foot. And what I do is always in relation to what my opponent is doing. Okay, so one of the rules, even though Bivol can sometimes get power in this jab here, he wants to make sure that he doesn't move his head across the line because that stops him from being able to get power into this right hand here. Okay, now that rule is the same. I'm going to play that one more time. If he's throwing it as a punch, say back here, right, as he jumps onto the line with that one here and then that two here, it's the same. But he's going to start this jab here, here, somewhere in the middle of his line here. See how he ends it at the end of, and then he ends it more on the front foot here. This is a very, very important idea, okay? So here we go. We're going to go ahead and play this clip. I'm going to show you guys kind of how it kind of winds up working out. Let's move this guy to the other side. There we go. Maybe make him a little bit smaller too. Okay, let me go ahead and get my gloves on. So again, we're going to be boxing. We're going to be moving on and off the line here.
And it's it's an interesting idea because Bibble doesn't really transition his weight, okay? He likes to sit in one position, uh, kind of here toward the middle of his line here. He will lean forward when he walks forward, right? He gets here and he'll kind of shoot a jab, but he'll make sure that he doesn't ever cross his head over his front foot, uh, over his opponent's uh, line, okay? Or across his opponent's head. All right, so he'll bring his head to the line, and that's gonna be the point at which he snaps his jab here, but he always wants to make sure that he has enough weight on his back foot to shoot the right hand. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to practice, okay? So first off, we have a line where one of our foot is gonna be on the left side of that line, and the other foot is gonna be on the right side of that line, and that line is gonna be connected to our opponent's head, okay? So when we imagine this, when we're on our back foot footwork pattern, we have a back heel on the ground, ball of our front foot here and we're going to be on the right side of our target okay now Bivo likes to be more here or more here even getting so far as to put his weight more toward the front foot here but again not crossing his opponent's line not bringing his rear shoulder forward making sure to guard the line with the left hand right and bring his weight forward okay so he'll get a little bit more karate more kicking style right for the sake of being able to step on and off the line here now, when we take a step forward, we're gonna be able to do this with a two-step process, okay? So again, we're gonna have that dot, we're gonna have our footwork, one foot on each side, our head on the right side of the line. And now, we're gonna do, without our hands first, we're gonna take a step forward, okay? Now, we can bring our weight forward, but if we can't bring our head across the line, okay? So we can bring it forward, now we can take a step, and we're gonna go on, and we're gonna go off. Now. You can do the footwork a few different ways. In the beginning, if you want to do it like the boxer step in the jump rope, okay? You're gonna go on the ball of your foot here, and then you're gonna bring your heel down to the ground so you can catch your weight here. Boom. One, two, one, two, okay? And you're just gonna use this footwork pattern here, and then now you're, woo, a little windy even on my laptop over there. Um, you're gonna use that front foot footwork pattern to sink into the front foot, but again, don't cross the line. Don't bring your weight all the way over here. Make sure that no matter where you step, you keep your head on the right side of the target. Okay? So we're going to take that step here. One. And we're going to take a step off with the same footwork pattern. On the ball of the foot, just like we're jumping rope here. Okay? So we're going to go one, two. One, two. Okay? It's very, very, very important because we need to make sure that when we throw this one, we keep our head on the back half so we can cross the line and get power into the right hand, okay? Just like Bivol does in this clip here. So, we have the basic footwork pattern, the basic drill, the basic work done. Now we're gonna add it to the drill here, okay? Now, this is done, it's gonna represent my opponent's head. I can still punch kinda anywhere I want, but I wanna make sure that I follow the rules of having one foot on the left side of this dot, one foot on the right, and then I'm gonna make sure my head is on the right side of that, that dot, okay? So, I'm gonna take my step here, jab okay and again boxer step i can go to land on the ball and then leave ball leave ball leave okay and this is the basic drill and the basic rhythm on the line off the line on the line off the line okay and by making sure that you keep your weight on the back foot you can always turn it into a right hand at any moment okay now if we bring our weight to the front foot here and cross the line we won't have any power in our right hand Okay, so one of the reasons, even though we don't want to be doing this punch, and we're going to talk about this in a second too, um, this is not a punch that we want to be opening up with, okay? So, when we throw our feint, right, as a jab, all right, we're going to get to the line here, keep our weight on the back foot, but if we practice throwing it into the bag, right, we're going to have a solid understanding of where our weight is when we get there, and it's going to be a very similar place for our feint. Now, that brings us to kind of the, the second layer, the second level of doing this drill. Uh, the second layer and the second level of doing this drill. And once you want to start turning it into a feint, you have to be able to get your weight to the front foot so you can transfer your weight, okay? If you can't get your heel to the ground, you're gonna throw it like this, but you're gonna block your own weight transition in your own hips. You won't be able to get any weight to it. So. The next step, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit in a second. When we're jabbing here, back foot, right? We're gonna to need to get our weight into the line by taking it onto our heel, okay? Boom, here. 
and then we're gonna drive into this punch here. But we have to catch our weight so it has somewhere to go with our right hand. So we're gonna practice it again, like this, learning to get our weight to the ground, right? Make it sharp, and then we're gonna practice it with the heel. One, two, okay? Give us a place to anchor our weight so we can drive it into our opponent, all right? Now again, the drill, one, two, one, two, okay? And then any time, you can just turn it into a right hand by fainting it, okay? And then again, making it more on the ball or the heel instead of the ball, we are on the line, off the line, on the line, off the line, right? Turning it into a right hand. Now, one of the problems with this back foot jab here, okay, is that it leaves us susceptible over this side of our shoulder if we're not crossing the line ever, right? Because we never block punches with this side. We never catch them here to move back here to throw this punch. We're only leaning up here and then stepping in with this jab. It winds up becoming easy to time. I want you guys to think about Canelo fighting um, Amir Khan coming into the line like this, right? With this shoulder exposed, right? Never getting back to his back foot position or transferring his weight to the back foot, doing it in the middle of his line. Now, this is a similar punch that Joe Smith Jr. caught Bivol with, right? Bivol's been hit by big punchers. He's been hit by guys who can time it. Um, so maybe he'll be used to it. But this is one of the reasons you see fit so few people using a back foot jab like this um, with their shoulder exposed as a means of offense, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Bivol doesn't just use this punch as a punch, all right? He's not just trying to get to the line here and go, bah, I got you, boom, boom, right? And then set the two up. He's using this punch to disrupt your rhythm and disrupt your line and intercept your line when you come in to attack him. Now, one person, if we get into a line or we get into our boxing stance or one of our positions, Bivol is a stance in, in this regard. But if we get here, we have to be able to move forward. And we can't just do that going like this. It doesn't work. So we have to bend our legs. We have to begin transferring our weight and leaning forward so we can take a step, right? Take a step. Now, Bivol is going to be able to get here, and he's going to be able to let that punch go, boom, and slide off the line at any time. Boom. Here. Bop. Right? A lot of times, when you move into his line like this and you start leaning onto the front foot, he looks to trap you here and control you with the lead hand, not a punch, right? But just control you to walk you into another shot. I actually think that that's what he's doing here as his opponent is trying to lean forward in this clip. He's trying to get his weight toward the front foot and Bibble controls him and gets his guard up and then allows him to cross his line to set this shot up. This is how you're supposed to kind of use this type of jab, okay, to control the space so you can move around uh, and land a bigger punch, not necessarily to attack your opponent. So, the kind of jab that you're going to attack your opponent with, Bivol, I mean, obviously he's going to hit people with this punch, but again, it's very dangerous. You're going to want to get to the front foot first, okay? Get to this position so you can start attacking him, boom, and fainting him. Now, Bivol does this in a very similar fashion as we saw in the last clip by getting to that point of the line where he's about to cross your line and jumping in with his jab, right? Boom, 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 and being able to get on and off the line. Again, though, using this jab to bait things from you rather than to attack you as we saw his opponent chase him after throwing that shot. So I want you guys to think about that when you think about whether you're going to use this type of punch or use this type of technique because... For the most part, it's to set other big punches up, okay? Now, one of the biggest problems with this style, as we've seen, is when Bivol throws his one, two, three, boom, boom, he's leaping with it, boom, 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 right? So I'm gonna cross the line with my right hand, I'm gonna make it to the front foot, I'm gonna cross my target, one, two. And now, in order to do that, while still jumping, I have to move my head back this far and throw a punch at the same time. What he's trying to achieve is when he throws the left hand, his left shoulder is close to the target. He throws the right hand, his right shoulder is close to the target. And then he throws the left hand, his left shoulder is close to the target. But he can't do that simply by transferring his weight and changing positions because he always practices his boxing with this pattern and with this rhythm and with this type of drill, okay? So one of the, the positives about it 
He's very quick on and off the line, right? Very quick here, very quick with the drilling, very quick with the pull counters, very quick. He's just very quick. He's not very powerful, okay? And it's one of the interesting things about his matchup with um, Canelo Alvarez is that Canelo is pretty powerful, but he's not super fast getting on and off the line. His boxing ability, his ability to set his attacks up, it's not super high level. Fortunately for him, most people are willing to just at some point in the fight, for some reason, just stand there and let him beat on him. I don't know why, but it's just how it happens. Um, maybe Bivol won't, I don't know. But um, anyway, very, very simple drill. On the line, keep your head on the back foot or on the right side of your target, right? One, one, two. Now again, real quick, I don't know if I, I mentioned it, but when you throw that fainting jab into the right hand, boom, keep your head on the back foot. You're not really gonna hit the bag with this jab all the time, right? Boom, boom, okay? It's just gonna use, be used to control the space and allow you to get into the correct position. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to share the video. Um, and if you're looking for private, personalized coaching, someone who can break down your drills, break down your work, break down what you're doing right and wrong, and help you grow and become the, the fighter that you want to be, okay? Check out my Patreon. Um, I do private coaching, I do Zoom sessions. Um, Anything that you want, anything that you need for boxing, I'm your guy. All right. Also, if you enjoyed film study, you enjoyed film study like this, learning about boxing, check out the, the other part of Patreon. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of videos. I think there's like a thousand videos on Patreon. Um, so check them out. Tons and tons of film studies. And uh, all my post-fight film studies go there. So an hour after Canelo versus Bivol happens, I'll be breaking it down on Patreon and putting up a video. All right. Thanks, guys.